what can you do to have really thriving relationships? And how can you take your communication in those relationships to the next level so that you can thrive and so that things are going well? Uh, this isn't a topic I talk about much, but if we think about high performance and leadership, it's all communication and it's all relationship. So this feels like it's an absolutely fundamental aspect of relationships, of leadership, of high performance. And it's something that most of us maybe have heard of, but don't often practice or don't practice enough of. And there are simple ways in which you can take your relationships to a healthier level of communication. So what we'll be covering today is nonviolent communication. If you're already familiar with it, fantastic. Might be a nice refresh. If you're not, there might be an opportunity to learn and to shift certain ways of communicating. The concept here is it goes through four phases. We have four phases of nonviolent communication. Now, if you look at how you normally have conversations with people in your life, and this could be your coworkers or colleagues or friends or partner or family members, often in terms of conflict, for instance, it ends up being a blame game. Tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> it begins with, well, you said you'd do that. Well, you know, but you told me that you would take charge of blah, blah, blah. And after about five seconds, it's not going too well. Why is that? Because we feel the instinct to blame because we're defensive and hurt and the other person feels the same. And then we're just going back and forth as who messed up, who messed up, who messed up, which doesn't support anything really and doesn't help anyone grow and just creates more tension and upsetness. So how can we shift this around? How can we create a different communication dynamic so you're not just going against each other, but actually supporting each other, especially if you care? Unfortunately, what happens is that generally these conflicts happen in romantic relationships, particularly because the feelings and emotions are so strong. Oh, but that person doesn't understand me anymore. They don't support me. They used to care so much. And we create all this rubbish in our minds instead of just shifting the way we communicate. The first thing to do is to state the facts objectively through observing. So you'd say, I observed when I came home that, you know, you didn't greet me, for instance, or that the flat was still untidy. Observe. Neutral. Not you said you do, not I said I do, not none of that, just facts. Take a deep breath. Preferably don't have this conversation when you're already heated or emotional. Try and wait a day. You know, yesterday I observed when I came home, the flat was still a mess. And I'm deliberately taking a very simple, basic example, but you're not stupid. You can apply this in way more, way heavier topics, also in work. Then you say what you feel. I felt upset because for me, it's important to have a tidy home for example, or because guests were coming later. I felt stressed because guests were coming later, for instance. And then, and this is particularly good, because what happens is when we play the blame game, the other person feels they can't escape. Well, you said you'd do that. Oh, you didn't do that. It feels like there's no way out for them. But then when you say, I need your help and support to tidy it now is an option. <laughs> or I need in the future for us to be more clear about who's tidying or who's doing what. And then you ask. Therefore, would it be possible next time um, if you're home sooner than me and we have guests for you to tidy? Now, how much more likely is the person to say, oh, yeah, sure, really sorry, I forgot or got caught up in a call or whatever? Versus you said you do it, why haven't you done it? That doesn't work very well. So let's look at a, a business example. So it's always the same framework. Observe feel, need, ask, observe, feel, need, ask. And at first it won't feel very natural, but after a while you'll get used to it and it'll become your default way of talking and communicating. In a business context, maybe your colleague forgot to send the proposal that was super important. Instead of directly blaming or getting angry and saying, you said you send the proposal, why haven't you sent the proposal? Now it's late, blah, 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 blah. 
I observed that the proposal wasn't sent. Neutral fact. I feel stressed, angry, annoyed, upset about this. I need to know in the future when we agree on a sending proposal that you will do it in time. I ask either for you to send it now or for you to uh, take charge of it in the future, etc. So you're giving them a way out. You're giving them a possibility by saying what you ask, what you'd like them to do. Say in the future, this would be useful or right now, this would really help me. What I'd like is for this. Because the bottom line is the situation is done. The proposal is said is not sent two days later. That's done. So you getting annoyed or upset or complaining or getting angry with them, purely victim mindset, and it's not going to help the situation. That proposal still needs to be sent. <laughs> so you can either take charge and say, hey, in the future, I would really appreciate if you can send it on time. Done. And you don't know what happened to your colleague. You don't know if, you know, his wife asked for a divorce that day. You don't know. So getting really angry and annoyed with someone when you've no idea what they're going through is also lacking empathy and compassion. And also we're human. We make mistakes. We forget things. That happens and it's okay. <laughs> so it's also having a bit of compassion for the people and for yourself. This is a basic framework, nonviolent communication. It really comes down to objective facts, then how you feel as a person, not focusing on how the other person messed up, but look, I feel upset or stressed or annoyed and I feel the need sometimes just to be heard, sometimes just... I would really appreciate if you could listen to me, but not come up with all these stories and all this anger. And if you start to shift from this blame, complain game that we all tend to have when we're hurt and we're defensive and we're upset, and that's okay. But if we start to shift, you'll feel better. Because instead of you feeling like you're a victim and it's all their fault and why did they mess up, you take charge. This is a situation. This is how I feel. These are the next steps. Do you agree? And then if your partner is also practicing nonviolent communication, again, whether it's in work or outside of work, they will say, I observe that you're upset about this. I feel remorseful or angry or also upset. I would like you to also hear my side of the story or hear how this happened. And I asked that in the future, we collaborate on this differently, or maybe we do it differently, because there might be situations in which something didn't happen and didn't get done because it wasn't clear. So I asked that in the future, maybe we discuss more clearly, so I'm more aware that this is important for you, or that this is the deadline, et cetera, et cetera. And then instead of it just being a back and forth blaming game, where no one's listening to each other, it becomes a clear, concise communication. This takes practice. This takes emotional intelligence. This takes pausing, calming, breathing, thinking rationally, and not being super emotional. If you're in a situation where you feel you're getting really carried away by your emotions of anger or upsetness, it's okay. It can happen. But it's better to pause and to wait to, for a moment where you're feeling more calm and grounded to have that conversation. And in general, when it comes to communication, so this is a non-violent communication framework general it helps if you can stay very grounded often stay the strongest state wins by which i mean that if you're grounded and anchored and feeling good then this will impact people around you and they will calm down i often say if the dalai lama was having a conversation with someone who's very angry probably within a few minutes that person would calm down why because dalai lama is so calm that the other person would calm down. The strongest state wins. So keep that in mind. In all communication, you can impact it a lot more than you realize simply by remaining the person that's level-headed, that's grounded, that's calm, and that will shift their state also. And more than anything else, I often think of what Eckhart Tolle talks about in The Power of Now, which is one of the greatest ways to work on our own growth, on our own spirituality, on our own groundedness is being with people relationships communication and so in moments where you feel that they're pulling you down or making you angry or making you upset remember your center ground yourself like a tree you can do it and this is great spiritual personal development growth and practice because these things 
activate a lot of energy and emotions in us. So great practice, which is always good. Hope this is useful for you. Wishing you amazing day, week ahead and practice, practice, even start practicing for fun now after listening to the episode to see what it's like to communicate in this way and formulate things in a more responsible, calm, grounded way. Thank you for tuning in.